take, taking a couple of leaps of faith, none of them too, too huge. I'm assuming because you all did this course, most of you are working in marketing. If you're working in marketing, you're probably trying to sell something. If you're trying to sell something, you're probably going to be advertising your product or your service at some stage as well. So to give you a bit of background into what we do in the agency I work in, in media agencies, uh, to summarise it quite quickly, which is a hard task in itself, we work with our clients and with other agencies to <coughs> come up with and devise communication strategies for that client or for their particular brands. Once that happens, what media agencies do, we then select and decide and plan what channels we should use to reach the audience and to sell our product. When we do that, then you get into the imp implementation, the buy-in of it, and we work from there. And a lot of our clients recently, over the past couple of years, they're coming to us, and a lot, of the, a lot of them are quite nervous in that they're not doing digital. What, what are we doing in digital? We need, to, we need to do more in digital. And yes is often the answer, but it's about how do we use digital as a technology. Digital in itself isn't a channel. And I think while Emer has showed you where marketing is probably going to be in 2020, I'm going to show you how we coerce marketeers and advertisers to get there, and especially using the channels that exist at the moment. So if I was, as a, digital isn't a new thing. That's the first thing. The internet has been around for 50 or 60 years. <coughs> the World Wide Web, which is really the internet as we know it, that's been around for since 1989. Google is 17 years old. The first smartphone was launched 15 years ago. Not the smartphones we have today, but the first smartphone was 15 years ago. What has changed that smartphone into what we all have now is technology. Facebook, which still seems like the new kid on the block, is 11 years old. Station Facebook is now a mainstream platform, and it has been for a number of years. So there's nothing, nothing new about Facebook. If I was to ask everyone here in the room to jot down three things that summarises digital for them, I can only imagine there'd be hundreds of different answers. For one person, it could be taking a picture of a nice sunset. It could be watching YouTube. It could be listening to a podcast. There's an absolute massive array of digital options and ways that people use digital, communicate via digital, and consume media via digital. And as marketing departments and advertisers, how people interact with our brands is becoming increasingly dominated by digital platforms as well. If we look at a building that we'll all be quite familiar with, and this it comes back to the principles of marketing, and I know that John's going to talk more about branding, but if you look at the building then, whenever that may have been, it's, I don't think any of us did the marketing practice course when it was <laughs> like that, and you look at the building more recently, the fundamentals are still the same, and the principles of marketing are still the same as well, in the way that we market today versus the way that we marketed 10, 15, 20 years ago, and the way we're going to market in the future. It's what's different about that building from the colour photograph, is it's the technology within that's driving it. The technology is what's made all the advan advancements. Whether that's the printer, whether it's the computers, whether it's the way people clean the windows, technology drives this. And myself and, myself and him talked about a little earlier about traditional media and whether or not it is in fact dead. I'm of the opinion that it isn't dead, it's just changing and evolving. Imar, coming from North America, it has, they're slightly more advanced in the, the process of decay. But as we were doing that, Emma was reading her printed notes about her presentation and I was scrolling through my smartphone for the same thing. <laughs> so none of us are quite sure where we stand, I think, is the upshot of that. But you will hear a lot of narrative about, you know, digital is the future and traditional media is dead. People didn't watch television because it was a particular media channel. It's because they wanted to view content. They wanted to watch videos. People read newspapers for news, for entertainment, for sports. So those fundamental needs, they haven't changed. It's the way that we're consuming them and the way that we're exposing ourselves to brand messages, that's the bit that's changing. So to prove a point, I hope, if this works, I'm going to play a piece of music here and with the exception of people who reside in North America and may not have seen their advertising over the past few weeks, I'll give you a little question afterwards. Okay, I think we got it. 
Is there anyone here that hasn't, that's been in Ireland for the last four to five weeks that hasn't heard that piece of music? As I expected. That's obviously, I'm still going to call them Aircom, I haven't got around to call them Air yet. But that's obviously the music that they've launched. And that's, that communication was launched through television, through radio, but it's been supplemented now obviously through a host of digital channels. If I was speaking to the marketing director of Aircom, I wouldn't have to wait for his answer. What they were trying to do over the past few weeks was just generate massive awareness. So what do you do for that? You use mainstream broadcast channels. Uh, Ireland still consumes enough of those to get massive awareness. Uh, everybody here saw that ad and has been exposed to the music. But that's not how Aircom are going to sell their products over Air, Aircom, let's just stick with it. That's not how they're going to sell their products over the next couple of years. They're going to use an absolute variety of digital platforms to do that. And I get back to, it's all about the task, the marketing task, what you're trying to achieve. That's how you decide which channel to use. So I've picked four examples for the sake of brevity. We could have a thousand examples. So first one, top left. If we look at television. 10 years ago, 15 years ago certainly, you want to plan television in Ireland, you buy RT1, 2, TV3, TG Car were in existence, four or five channels, there you go, you've covered the market. More recently, RT Player is there. So uh, video on demand has become absolutely huge. Uh, so now I think as of, as of this year, 42 TV stations carry Irish advertising. So that's your, your RTEs, your RT Plus Ones, your Sky Living, Sky Living Plus One, Alibi, and a whole lot of channels that I presume none of you watch because you've much better things to be doing. But the key thing is, we don't look at it as television. We're not, we look at it as audiovisual. So if we have a piece of audiovisual content, and it comes back to the content piece that Emma mentioned, it's easier and people have more fun consuming content via video a lot of times than via written and printed word. So we don't plan television anymore, we plan video. And some of that is delivered by the box in the corner of the room, some of it is delivered on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your laptop, wherever it may be, via YouTube. But it's, you can still achieve the same task, it's just you're using different channels to do it. And that's what digital is doing, it's changing the technologies behind it. Print, I know Keith has a, a close association with print. It is one that is suffering a little bit more. As I said earlier, people read newspapers or magazines for fashion editorial or sport or news, whatever it might be. They're still consuming the exact same things. People have the same desires and wants for the same stories, but they're doing it through different channels. Buy and sell was um, you know, a mainstay in many homes. It, I don't know if shops even carry it anymore, how much it's um, published. Dundeal is one of the top websites in the country. Same task, just facilitated by technology. That's what, again, that's another channel. And even in car radios, I know a couple of my mates, they don't even listen to the radio even when they're driving the car anymore. They have their smartphone, they have their podcast, and they just plug it in. Spotify is another example of challenges to your own industry. Spotify, they launched it, it was free. And like any of these platforms, they're launched, they're free, but then when they get to a critical mass, when they become a mainstream of people's habits, that's when we in the advertising industry come in and ruin it, and we start monetizing it, and we start showing ads. So, well, those couple of exam examples show that digital, like, it underpins all the media we consume. It isn't one channel in its own right, it's a whole host of channels. But there is still a role, I'm, I'm conscious that some of you guys, you might be working in a marketing department and you might be just focused on Galway, or just focused on Connacht, or just focused on the, the west of Ireland. And there's still options out there, they're diminishing, um, and the audiences, in a lot of instances, are declining. But there's still options out there where you can reach a number of people if your company and if your marketing department isn't geared towards a whole host of digital. Because digital involves a lot of time, a lot of work. If you've got a presence on social media, you need to invest time into that as well. And if you're running a one-man shop or a one-man band, you may not have that time. The map here is the bubbles are just the local stations in each of those areas. You go into, like Galway here, strong figures here, 61% of people listen to local radio on Galway every week. In Donegal, I don't know what they're at, but 82% of people <laughs> tune into Highland Radio every week. And the further you go away from the city, especially Dublin, the more important they become. And I spo we spoke about this earlier, because it's that trust issue. People tune into Highland Radio, they know that the news they're getting is about their county. Not the Dublin media, not the national media, it's about their county. And the, the, the spikes in listenership on local radio come at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. when the death notices are on. It's, and it's absolutely true. The, 
out McDonald's, I was at something last week where McDonald's won a, a couple of awards for these different campaigns. And they used, now, it wasn't just this. They had a whole host of activity across other media and digital platforms as well. But they located <coughs> these shelters, they located these sites close to their stores, and people were coming in and they saw success from it. So these in isolation won't work, but oftentimes a certain digital channel in isolation might not work either. The last bastion of just staying away from everything is cinema, but it is quite niche and it's quite young targeted. But it's, it is a place where people can go completely switch out and it is somewhat free of, of the digital revolution, but it's less important than most other channels. So as marketers, where should you, where should you spend your money? If we look at the Irish advertising industry over the past nine, ten years, you will see the big dark blue in the middle is print and the light blue at the top is digital. TV, radio, outdoor, kind of same, same. Same amount of money been invested in it, but it's invested in channels that have progressed, channels that have new platforms available. So I spoke about how TV is changing and how they would be consumed through different devices. The one, and because of the nature of printed paper, the one that finds it more challenging to change is newspapers. And you can see that the amount of investment there is declining. And a huge amount of what's left is driven by the retailers, and that's both national and locally. The retailers, they don't do that because they think it's a good idea, it's because they know it works for them. But print is, that funnel is only going in one direction. And eventually it'll get to a point where the number of people reading newspapers isn't big enough for Dunn's, Tesco, Little Aldi to be advertising and that will be a worry in time. But the important, in terms of today's conversation and future looking, the bar at the top, it's only going to increase because people are spending more time consuming digital platforms and devices, so that's where advertisers are going to go and that's where the money is going to follow. In the UK, that's going to break 50% in the next 12 months, so that shows where they're at. But to answer the question, where should you spend? You spend where your consumers are. It's simple. It's not rocket science. The problem is that your consumers are everywhere. So yeah, trying to focus in on what you're, where to spend, it depends <coughs> on what you're trying to achieve. In Ireland, this is some research we carried out ourselves last year, earlier this year. People say that they're consuming 11.8 hours of media per day. They also say they're sleeping for seven hours a day. Presume they're eating, doing a few other things, so the amount of time they spend at work is quite questionable. <laughs> but the important bit, if you add all these up, and it's not including, you know, viewing posters while on a bus or in a car. It's not just include reading a newspaper, reading a magazine, or a whole host of other things. People are multitasking, and that's the biggest challenge is facing advertisers and marketers and people that are trying to get their brands in front of people. So I mentioned about TV is still strong. TV is still strong, but what we're not quite sure of is the attention that's been paid to our television ad. I'm sure this is a familiar scenario to a lot of people in the room. Like we all do it. We watch TV and we're flicking through our phone, and whether a tablet beside us or something else. So while we're, we're fighting to get our message in front of people, we're also trying to make sure that they're actually attentive to our message. And that's where digital has an advantage on other media. If you're popping up in someone's Facebook feed, you know that's a one-on-one -on -one message. And there's very little chance that they're going to be distracted by something else. But different channels, as I say, do suit different tasks. There isn't one size fits all. Whatever industry you're working in, whatever you're trying to market or sell, whatever your task, it could be different for one product to another as well. So different channels do suit different tasks. Come back to AIR. They wanted awareness. That's all they wanted. They wanted people to know that they're now called AIR, Aircom is dead. So traditional media, TV, radio, it delivered that. As I said, it's not going to sell broadband for them. It's not going to sell their business products. They need to tap into a whole host of other channels to do that. And it's going to be a very complex plan that they have to come up with, but they will. But to deliver awareness, you bang it out on mainstream. Unfortunately for most of you guys in this room that work in marketing departments, you don't have two, three, four, or six million to spend to get people aware of your brand. 123.ie and every insurance company and a lot of people working in the hotel industry and loads of other industries, Google is an absolutely critical channel because you've got to be there when someone is searching for your business. So the easiest person, and comes back to the intention that we, <coughs> we saw earlier, the easiest people to convert are those that are already predisposed to buying your product. So if they're in Google searching, you've got to make sure that you're there to convert them. Someone like Taskbar, which somehow popped into my mind, they, they can target people on Facebook because there's going to be a certain age cohort there, and it works really well for that. 
But Facebook doesn't work for everything. People spend a lot of time consuming it, but they're consuming it in their own leisure time and their switched off time. People don't want to be making a broadband purchase decision when they're on Facebook. Or they don't really want to be deciding which insurance will I buy or what car insurance should I switch. So you've got to make sure that when you're reaching them, you're reaching them at the right times. Like the worst thing some companies do is try and get into that personal space with their product message and it's not the right time and it can have a negative effect and there's research to show that people don't want to be exposed to serious messages when they're having their leisure time. So two things, two points just to finish on um, and it's, it's just two points of order I suppose for you guys if you're here using digital. You've got to know what the channel delivers. So if you're spending your money and your audience is there, you still got to know what the channel can deliver and what you're going to get out of it. So if, you're, if you decide, yes, I am going to advertise on website X because I know my audience is there and I've got a product to sell. If you put up display advertising, that's essentially putting an ad in a magazine. It's just on a different platform. People are not going to click on your ads. No matter how wonderful it is, no matter how interactive it is, no matter how many cartoons you have, I sit through presentations every single week where I say to a client, this campaign, 0.2% of people clicked on the ad, and it's fantastic. It's amazing. Whereas if it was 0.1%, it would be an absolute travesty. People, there's more chance of meteor strikes, getting not put down by a bus, getting run over by an elephant, take your pick, than someone clicking on your ad. But it's an awareness channel. People will see your message there. What you've got to do then is build on it elsewhere. And finally, Something that's changed quite a bit over the last four or five years is the role of Facebook. In October 2011, if you had a message, and this goes back to if you're a pub or a restaurant or a hotel or whatever you may be, if you're trying to communicate with your audience, which I'm sure many of you do via Facebook, five years ago, you could reach probably one in five by putting up a post on Facebook. May 2012, Facebook floated on the stock exchange and suddenly they decided, that's it, free, t free time is over. If you want to reach an audience via our platform, you've got to pay for it. Now, if you put a post out, it's less than 2%. So pretty much most Facebook pages in Ireland have you know, less than 50,000 fans. So you're into almost single digit figures in terms of the number of people that are going to be seeing your message. So a couple of points of order. Digital, it's, it's the way you use it. It's a platform that's here to stay. We spend six hours connecting. We spend six hours online via email, via internet. We spend another half hour, 40 minutes on our smartphones, people are only going to be spending more time with connected devices. So it's about trying to get your product message in front of them on the right device and in the right space. So it's not quite this sunny out, but thank you very much. Mm -hmm.